All right, another extraordinary week in Michigan politics, though at some point, if you keep using the word extraordinary, maybe it means that the extraordinary has become ordinary, but nonetheless, quite a bit of upheaval again this past week. A lot of it centering on my first guest, Matt DiPerno, the likely Republican candidate for Attorney General. And Mr. DiPerno joins me now uh, via Zoom. Matt, I appreciate you being here. I want us to get to the tabulators situation and the investigation uh, that seems to be looming in a moment. But first, let's start uh, with uh, a rather crazy day on Friday. We had a couple of county conventions for the GOP trying to take place, one in Hillsdale County that was canceled after after the Hillsdale chair got rid of 70 of the 100 uh, duly elected county de uh, GOP delegates. And then we, I guess, had two conventions basically taking place in Macomb County because there seems to be quite a bit of disagreement over who the G uh, Macomb County GOP chairs are, one according to the courts, another according to the Michigan uh, Republican Party. But Matt, I don't think there's any doubt that some of the upheaval in the party right now is about your nomination, isn't it? Oh, I, I don't know about that. I think there's, you know, this is the normal process where delegates get elected. Delegates want to be part of this decision in terms of the uh, these races that are uh, nominated at and then uh, um, confirmed in August, uh, and they want to have a say. So this is the, uh, you know, our, our representative uh, republic at work. Um, I haven't heard anything that this has anything to do with me. Uh, well, there are the, uh, the uh, Detroit News, for example, ran an editorial this past week that said that given that you're under investigation now, uh, that Republicans would be wise to pick somebody who uh, would have a, a cleaner run against Dana Nessel, who the Detroit News believes deserves a, a really strident opponent, uh, but that it might not be you, given the things that are looming over your head at the moment. I, but I don't get any sense from what I've heard you say that you're thinking at all about not uh, putting yourself up for that nomination on August 27th. No, no, we, we don't have any issue. And and why would we sit here and listen to a liberal commentator from the Detroit News talk about uh, Republican politics and our party? Uh, I don't care what a <laughs> uh, opinionated commentator says on the Detroit News. What I know is I won the, the nomination in April. That'll be confirmed in uh, August. And we will move on to the general election and defeat, defeat Democrats in November. The Detroit News editorial page is uh, seldom referred to as liberal, but uh, I, I, under, I, I take your point. Let's, uh, let's move, if we could, then to the investigation that is being sought now by uh, your opponent. I, I just uh, mentioned that this is a pretty extraordinary circumstance where Dana Nessel has asked for a special prosecutor to look into the behavior of her opponent. Um, but I guess I'd turn the tables. If you were the attorney general and you believed that someone uh, had broken the law and it just so happened that that person was someone that you were going to be running against, what would you do? Would you call it off so that because, of, you, you, uh, because you wouldn't want it to appear political? Well, what we know is that Dana Nessel has been conducting this investigation since uh, February. And uh, she knew I was a political opponent back then. She continued her investigation then despite her conflict of interest. I think when you have a conflict, the wise thing to do would be to uh, appoint a, a special prosecutor back in February if she was serious about this. But Dana Nessel is not serious about this, and I can tell you why. Back on December 2nd of 2020, uh, in the Antrim County case that I worked on, where Dana Nessel was my opposing counsel, I notified both her and Jocelyn Benson about a tabulator in Antrim County uh, that had the security tapes removed and was broken into during the actual election and then was used in subsequent elections. Dana Nessel never cared about that, which makes me believe she doesn't really care about this issue. What she's doing is weaponizing her office, using taxpayer money to attack a political opponent. And that's what's most important about this story, which no one is reporting on yet, is Dana Nessel used taxpayer money, which is actually an illegal campaign contribution that she is using to benefit her campaign. Well, you, you've, you've, said that you, you've said that you believe she's being political in this, but aren't you too? Because a centerpiece of your campaign is that you want to become attorney general, you said, so that you can prosecute Dana Nessel and Governor Whitmer. Aren't you both doing the same thing? No, we're not doing the same thing. There's a big difference. Let's not conflate the issue of being a candidate uh, like myself, an outsider coming in, 
who wants to change the system and eliminate corruption of current elected people. Dana Nessel is currently elected. She took an oath of office to honor the Constitution, and she has violated that. Well, that she is the me. most corrupt attorney general in the country. So there's a big difference between being a candidate like myself well, and being an actual, actual corrupt elected official she's, like she's, Dana Nessel. She's not, Matt, she's not the only one, though, who's taken issue uh, with the fact that you seem to have come into possession or have uh, access to voting tabulators. Now, I know that you don't believe uh, that, it, that it's against the law. Your reading of the statute is that it is not necessarily against the law to have one, but you've been very coy about how you came into possession of these tabulators. Can you tell me now where you got them? Well, I, I've been very clear about this. I, I've never had possession of any of these tabulators. I've been very clear about that. I've never talked to any uh, precinct clerks about tabulators, and I've never had possession well, of tabulators. Well, but that's a change, too, Matt, because the Detroit News found a, a podcast from last year where your phrase was, we got access to tabulators. Are you just changing the pronoun from we to they? No, well, uh, you know, expert witnesses who worked on the case had access to tabulators, but there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, who cares about that? Because the statute reads that you, you, you can have authorized access to a tabulator so long as uh, it's not during the election or after the election up until the point that the vote is certified. But I want to come back to the December 2, 2020 issue where I notified Dana Nessel of an actual tabulator that was used in the election uh, in November of 2020 that was broken into, that had the security seals removed, and then was used in subsequent elections. And Dana Nessel didn't care about that. So why does she care about this issue right now? The only reason is she wanted, she leaked documents to the Detroit News Sunday night because she wanted well, to. She wanted to, to hurt me prior to the upcoming I, I, uh, county I, convention. I know I, I, I will expect to, to be talking to Dana Nessel again before the election and uh, to talk about the things that she did during the, that, that time, but I'm more concerned right now with what you've done during that time. If you want to argue, and I think uh, most election officials I've talked to find that a specious argument that it's okay to have a Michigan tabulator, one thing that I don't think you would disagree with me on, and I'm not, I don't play, even play an attorney on TV, but it's pretty clear in the statute that it is illegal to damage a tabulator and the word is I'm sorry those, I didn't hear you that it's that it's that illegal, it to, illegal do what? to damage a tabulator and the word is that those tabulators went when they were returned at least one of them if not several had been damaged not too surprising when someone was going after them with I don't know whatever kind of tools to try and and crack them open and see what kind of things could be manipulated with them inside but you're an attorney. It is, you are duty bound to report any illegal activity. If you knew that one of those had been damaged, aren't you on the hook for that? Well, I have no knowledge at all of any tabulator that was ever damaged. I never saw any tabulator that was damaged. I was never in the room with any tabulator that was damaged. And I never heard of any tabulator that was damaged until this Sunday when Dana Nessel made that allegation. So okay, as far as I'm concerned, um, I, I've seen no evidence of that. The other thing, though, that's happened here, though, has been a bit of a change in tone of the way that the story goes. Originally, uh, last year, you talked about, uh, you, you seem to be saying, look, it's so easy to get a hold of one of these tabulators that, of course, this is how mayhem could happen in the election. Now you're trying to make it sound like it was a much more open process. Well, if that's true, these tabulators were apparently, according to the allegations, returned to uh, their rightful spots through handoffs going on at carpool parking lots and shopping malls. If it was on the up and up, why doesn't it look like it was on the up and up? Well, I have no idea. I, I, again, I don't know um, the facts related to that. Uh, I wasn't involved in the um, collecting a tabulator or returning a tabulator. But what I can tell you is we are a home rule state in Michigan, which means local municipalities are, have the ability to govern themselves um, and have full autonomy as to whether or not they want to give access to somebody uh, of a tabulator. They don't have right. to go to the Secretary of State Benson or Nestle to get permission. Uh, so what we're really talking about here is, is much ado about nothing. 
What we're talking about is Dana Nessel weaponizing her office against a political opponent me, and uh, using taxpayer money to do that. Because Madam, nothing Madam, she's Madam. actually described in her petition for a special counsel was illegal. Well, let's broaden this out to the bigger issue, which is that you take great, uh, uh, you take great issue with the fact that m me and so many others have reported that there were no examples of widespread voter fraud, and you believe that it was a fraudulent election in 2020. Um, I, I'm, I'm really curious as to whether or not you have been watching the January 6th hearings. No, I, I have not spent any time watching the January 6th do you, hearing, do you, which is, do which you is, not feel party to part of the fuel that fed what happened at the Capitol on January 6th? I wasn't. I wasn't at the Capitol no, on January 6th. No, no, no. 6th. But, 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 but your narrative on what you saw um, was clearly what drove a lot of the anger that we watched that day. Unfounded as it may be to most of us who've covered these elections, you you feel well. No, you can't. What you can't put that on me, and I think that's a ridiculous statement, quite frankly, to make. Look, um, for you to even come here and say uh, that there's been no widespread evidence of fraud is number one, false. But number no, two, not. why does it matter, okay? Um, why does it have to be widespread? Why can't there just be fraud? How much fraud is okay with you is the question. Well, is it but, 10 but, but votes? Matt, I mean, you're, how, you're, much is, you're a part how much is okay system. with you? But you're a part of the legal system. You understand how this system works. And at a certain point, when you've had uh, all of these election boards, canvassing boards, clerks from towns and cities, secretary of state, judges up and down the docket telling you that all of these claims were false, if 10 people tell you you're drunk, you got to lie down, right? I haven't heard one single judge say what you just said. Even the judge in, in Antrim County, Judge Elsenheimer, was very complimentary of the evidence that we produced. He said he wanted to get to the bottom of it, but he ultimately summarily dismissed the case on a procedural Most issue. Of the judges have said But, but what, there's what, not what, been what one judge single Kenny judge. In, I haven't seen a judge that said that there was no fraud. Well, I, I haven't seen judges, judges that actually like reviewed the judge evidence. Kenny said in Wayne County, which is that uh, we, what we had here is a whole bunch of people who didn't understand how the system worked and ascribed um, false and malevolent motives to what is a normal process. That wasn't my case. I wasn't involved in that I case. I, I can only speak to what we found in Antrim County. We put out 22 reports that actually showed evidence of a subversion in the election system. Let me, That's let me what we found. Okay. Let, let me ask you one more. I question. mean, all you got to do is all you got to do is read our reports. But for you to somehow come here and maliciously dis, uh, assign some motive to me that has to do something with January six sort of shows I, I, the I, level I, of, of just, bias I, that you have I, I, as a reporter. Well, Why would you suggest every that reporter I have anything in town to has do been insulted. Every reporter in the state who covered the election has been a little insulted by suggestions that we somehow missed the biggest example of voter fraud in American history. But let me ask well, you one you, last question. Did and you, that did is, you if not you miss were the attorney in, in general. Antrim, well, hold on a second. In Antrim County. Antrim County I, was a perfect example of the system working. They found a no, it problem. Didn't. It, that was a, the, that the, is a the completely voting, false voting statement. software had not been false updated. Statement. No, that's the voting a false so statement. That is not what happened in Antrim County. The voting software had not been more updated. Importantly, and once it, it did, okay. it flipped. If I was going to try and turn Antrim County, uh, I, well, for, if I was going to try to turn an election well, why, in why Michigan, you, I would why never use Antrim on, County. Why do you where invite Trump me on your show if you're not going to allow me to answer your questions? I keep trying. I'm trying to cover a lot no, of No, you're not even letting me Go answer the question. Finish. But I, I in Antrim County, let me ask you this. Why did you miss the issue of an actual tabulator in Antrim County that had its seals removed, it was broken into, and it was used in the election? Why didn't you report on that? Why has Dana Nessel done nothing about that, but yet you want to stand here and ask me these questions? and make the false statement that there was nothing wrong in Antrim you, County. But, but you, Why don't you report on the actual issue of an actual criminal act that occurred during the election? Because we report, County. what we reported on was its trip through the courts, which led nowhere. And I, where, and where I got filed to the point that, even where a motion Rudolph in Giuliani the County, and Sidney the Powell's defense ended up being, we can't possibly be expected to be taken at our word, even though we're talking in a court of law. But why assign anything about Sidney Powell to me? I had nothing to do I, with Sidney Powell's just case that at that was all. Part, that was the, that, but that was part, uh, in, in some ways, no, part but, and parcel of your problem in, in the media, really your problem as, as what I'd call fake news uh, yeah. internet content creators, 
is to take a case like mine, which was legitimate, which actually produced real evidence and showed a real subversion in the system, but but you conflate that case with all these other cases and don't well, assign I, the actual credibility I, I, to my I'm case sorry, that it I, deserves. I, I got to get to a break. I could talk to you about this for several hours, and believe me, I would love well, to accept should, the, but, you know, would we should, but you guys Peabody have to award start for... being, you, the reporters have to start being honest about what they're reporting. I, I'm, but I'm, for you to somehow it, suggest that I had anything to do with January 6th is, I didn't is suggest, the height I, I, I was of, simply it is asking the height, if you felt the it, height of hypocrisy by the media. Okay, I got uh, it. That's why get to Donald Trump Matt. always calls out the media as being fake news. I got to get to a break. For you Matt, to I, even I, suggest that is insulting. I, I appreciate and, your and time, Matt. Thank you it very also much. I'm sorry. I got to get to a break, friends. We'll continue with more on Flashpoint right after this.